Hello and welcome back to a Project Cars 2 video where today we have the final round from Season 4 of the Apex Online Racing Endurance Series and it is going to be at Circuit de la Sauve, the Le Mans 24 hour circuit as you can probably guess as we're coming into the Porsche curves. This is a very very important race as not only is it the final race of the season but it's also the race that is going to determine both the driver and also the team championship standing. So myself and Warn Tire will be looking to get a good result and we'll give you a rundown of what the standings are just before we get into the race. But we're coming into the final four minutes of the qualifying session here. I'm at the end of an invalidated lap, so I'm just building myself a nice bit of a gap to the cars in front, so hopefully we won't really catch too much traffic up ahead of them. It's not so much the LMP1 guys that I'm worried about, but it's more the GT and the LMP2 cars that could potentially impact our lap as we begin in that with a whole bunch of hybrid. Coming into turn one now, before we come into turns two and three, the Dunlop chicane dropping down into second gear, flicking it back up into third, just as we come through the right-hander before coming out underneath the Dunlop bridge, using a little bit of the hybrid just to bring us back up to speed as we're now into the S section. Fourth gear through the left, fifth through the right, using all the available width of the circuit before coming into Tetra Rouge, completely flat out, not any hint of lifting off there. And then we're gonna use the remainder of the hybrid NG as we come down the Hernanda straight here, down towards the first Mulsanne chicane. We have ourselves a little bit of time to prepare and compose ourselves, ready for the breaking point, which is gonna be just before the 100 meter board on the left-hand side, shifting it down into third gear for the entry, down into second for the left, and then accelerating out through the exit again, using all of the hybrid energy that is available to us there. You can see, by the lap delta on the left hand side just above the relative board we're about three tenths of a second up on our previous fastest lap at the moment looks like we've got a gte car up ahead but hopefully it will catch him on the next straight second mosan chicane now down into fourth gear then down into second for the right hander before accelerating out through the exit and we've gained a bit more time there on our previous fastest lap obviously the previous one is a bit more of a banker so this lap push a little bit harder and try and get a more representative and quicker lap time in taking a little bit more risk coming into Mulsanne corner now shifting it all the way down into second gear slight little lock up there running a little bit deep now down into first it's cost us a little bit of time as we weren't getting quite as heavy on the accelerator as early as I would have liked to have done so the uh, the time that we had gained I think it was about eight times eight to nine tenths of a second just as we were coming into the apex going to drop down to just over six tenths as we're on the run down this back straight towards Indianapolis through the right hander taking it completely flat out before getting hard on the brakes down into second gear for Indianapolis proper accelerating out through the exit using just a little bit of the hybrid energy before coming into Arnage the slowest corner on the circuit down to 84 kilometers an hour before getting hard on the accelerator out through the exit using all of the hybrid energy that is available to us and we've got an LMP1 car up ahead Hopefully it keeps his pace up through the Porsche curves which we're just about to enter and won't affect us. We're about a second up on our previous fastest lap time. So coming into the Porsche curves now, shy of the apex upon the entry which is going to be putting me offline coming through these two flat out left handers before we come into this long right, just a slight lift and a slight downshift before chucking it in left and coming out through the exit through the Corvette curves. Just a little right left there and there's just the four chicanes just the last few corners on the lap down into fourth gear through the first part then down into third and then dropping it down into second for the final two corners a little bit of oversteer there on the exit but using the remainder of the hybrid energy that was available to us and popping ourselves up to a provisional p3 and by the end of the session I ended up being uh, out qualified by endless berserker and also jardier dropping us down into p4 in 5th was Dow King with Lucas and 6th, Leon the 6th one in 7th, Nunu starting in 8th position, my teammate Warren Tyre starting in 9th, and then in P10 was Brzanchek. 
So here we go then, coming onto the race grid. We're going to be doing our usual manual formation lap and we'll be doing the entirety of the lap as well. Unfortunately, Endless ended up disconnecting from the session in the transition from race to qualifying. So that's taken him out of contention for the championship and also bumped us up into P3. One other thing to also note is the fact that we've got Jardier, Dowking and also Leon the sick one uh, coming in as guest drivers just to try and help boost the numbers a little bit in this race as the, uh, the numbers had been falling off over the course of the season. Where they are guest drivers though, they will not be counted in terms of their overall finishing position and will not take away points from those who have been competing in the regular season. So even though they may be here in this race and present on track, uh, obviously, the fight between myself, Endless, Berserker, Lucas and Warntire uh, will not be affected by the finishing position of those other drivers. But obviously, we're going to need to tread fairly careful and fairly lightly around those to make sure that they uh, don't impact our race in any negative way. And likewise, they've been advi advised to uh, kind of try and stay clear, only make safe passes on us to uh, avoid impacting our championship in a negative fashion either so let's take a look at the drivers championship coming into this final round and it's one tire leading the way with 40 points to his name myself is only a single point behind and i am in joint second place with endless and berserker both also on 39 points and then lucas there in fifth place with 35 points so just five points separating the top five very very close at the top end there and it'll make this interesting for this title fight here in this final round looking at the rest of the championship though Nunu is in P6 with Lewis in P7 Spudbuster there in P8 P9 is Bizanchek and then Skarki is there in P10 and they're in their own little battle as well as Nunu and Lewis are both on 13 points apiece and then Spudbuster, Bizanchek and Skarki also in joint 8th position, each with 11 points there. And now jumping to the team championship standings, it is just a single point that is separating me and Warn Tire and Warn York Racing at the top from Audi Sport Wales, which is driven by Berserker and also Endless. So extremely close between our two teams. Then there's a bit of a gap, 30 points in fact to Audi Sport, MP3, Infinity Racing are a further 25 points behind EVR Motorsport in P5, four points behind them. And then down by the Riverside Engineering have 11 points to their name and B on Edge is there with three points. So as you can see, both championships are up for grabs here in this final round. So jumping ahead then through time. So we're more towards the end of the formation lap as you probably didn't want to see us uh, just trundling around at lower speeds. We're coming up towards the formation point where we'll form up into our 2x2 two two formation to get the race underway. As you can see, the race is going to be about 2 hours and 20 minutes of actual racing action. So it's going to be a pretty long one here and it is due to rain later on in the race as well. So I've set up the car appropriately for obviously the circuit but then also the later conditions as well because running very, very low wings or pretty much no wing at all be pretty tough when it uh, actually goes a little bit wet so just on and off the brakes at the moment just trying to generate some heat back into uh, into the brakes after the brakes and tires have uh, cooled off from trundling at slower speeds around the formation lap we're just coming through the final corners now as Jardier is going to be the man who's going to uh, lead us off to begin the race we're just waiting for him to put his foot down to signify the start and there it is so we're off and away racing using some of the hybrid energy but we're not going to use it all before we get to turn one and it looks like we're up ahead and alongside Berserker almost running out wide there in turn one but coming in towards turn two just about getting the car slowed down for the apex leaving some room on the inside as Jardia went straight on over across the chicane and that is going to be us up into the race lead did momentarily get a slowdown warning but we managed to clear that before the Dunlop chicane and we're out leading the pack with Dalkin behind Berserker has dropped down into P3 as a few of us were making some mistakes there in the opening few corners with the cold tyres and the cold brakes just struggling a little bit more than we initially predicted coming down the first Hernandez straight here 
going to very much come under pressure from Dalkin behind in the Audi R18. He's got a natural straight line speed advantage and he's also got the slipstream as well. So here he comes, pulling up alongside me here. Just glancing over with the track IR, lifting out to let him go on through. But he actually gets on the brakes a little bit earlier than I do. And somehow or other, managing to go side by side through that first chicane and actually retake the lead as we come through the apex and out through the exit. Obviously Dalkin just treading fairly lightly around myself as he is one of those guest drivers and here he comes once again using a little bit more hybrid energy than myself and was able to slip on past before we get to the second chicane quite comfortably and now it's Berserker who is right there behind me as we're in the braking zone and navigating our way through the second chicane. Dalkin wasn't on the most ideal line coming out through the exit we close up a little bit onto the rear of his car but he then manages to eke a little bit back out ahead Still sat in second position at the moment as Dalkin's got a two second penalty already as we come into Marsan Corner for the first time at racing speeds and getting very, very close to the back of Dalkin there, having to take avoiding action. That's going to cost me P2 and promote Berserker up into that position, dropping down into P3 now. And that was a pretty costly mistake, just missing my breaking point slightly, and then the closing speeds were much higher than I uh, was initially anticipating. So what initially seemed like an absolute dream start with taking the lead very early on has uh, slipped away through my hands somewhat. This is now Leon the sick one who's, uh, who's coming up behind us. Not too far off the back of the guys up in front but certainly out of uh, slipstream range which is where I want to be really as uh, this is going to be an interesting race with the, uh, the fuel strategy. Toyota and the Porsche can go longer than the Audis as I have been explaining over the course of the previous uh, previous rounds and it seems Berserker has now managed to get himself up into uh, up into the race lead and has uh, taken that away from from Dowking but I want to if I can try and hold on to the back of one of these Audis and uh, see if I can use one of them to do a little bit of fuel saving as I've got Leon the sick one coming up behind me here getting fairly close to the back of me but he's not going to make the overtaken move coming into uh, the final chicanes here so we'll snake our way through these and then coming out through the exit to complete our first proper racing lap to begin the next one 4.3 seconds off the back of Berserker already he is going to be the main guy that I'm battling because Lucas is a bit further, seems to drop down through the field. Endless is obviously disconnected from the race and therefore isn't participating and judging by the chat as well has been popping up every now and then. It seems like Warn Tire has had some issues and I can see him actually on the relative board as well. And you can see the gap is closing quite rapidly and what actually happened was Warn Tire was involved in an incident which actually ended up putting him onto his roof and he was asking how to reset back onto the circuit uh, so we can get racing once again and there he is there in the middle of the straight upside down and unfortunately not able to uh, find a way to get back onto all four wheels so unfortunately for him that's taken him out of contention for the championship fight as well and now it's mainly between myself and Berserker so hopefully if I can hold on to the back of one of these Audis I should be able to fight him later on in the race in terms of the strategy the longer and bigger well should I say the, the larger fuel tank here on the Toyota allows it to go longer into a race stint on a single tank of fuel and that is the main strategy and I'm going to be uh, hoping will work also setting the car up to slightly accommodate for the rain later on as well hoping that we're going to be competitive there and uh, basically still in somewhat a position not too far off the back of the leading Audis to be able to uh, fight and battle for the race winners Leon is starting to close up here as we're coming down this back straight and uh, past the two right-handed kinks just letting him go through on the right hand side there's no point in trying to fight him he's got a natural straight line speed advantage with that Audi also it means that if I can uh, attach myself to the rear of his car then I can uh, 
basically stick with him, do a little bit of fuel saving as well and make it a little bit easier to go a little bit further into the race and try and do this race in one less pit stop than what the Audis will need to do it in. So you can see just popping out of the slipstream a little bit because very much aware that I'm very close to the rear of uh, Leon's car. Didn't really want to lose any time and you can see that I've got a bit of hybrid deployment left but I'm not able to deploy it as I've uh, used the maximum amount that you can use over the course of a single lap. You just saw there the uh, slowdown warning flashing up. It's now got Jardy 8 right on the uh, on the rear of my car. Just going a little bit defensive as he's looking to the right hand side and there he goes around the outside just breaking a little bit earlier just to basically let him go on through. I didn't really want to fight him there. I didn't really want to take any risks. So I'd rather just let him through see if I can uh, hold on to the back of him. See if we can keep pace with the rest of the guys in front of us. We've got a pretty reasonable uh, gap to Pazancic behind. He's now up into 6th position, but he's, uh, he's 13 odd seconds off the rear of me. So, I'll be looking to uh, keep our eyes forward rather than uh, looking at the gap behind too much. Let's see what we can do in terms of settling in with a decent race pace. But with all the uh, the pressures and the tension coming into this race, it's obviously very unfortunate to see that uh, Warn Tire has now actually left the session retiring from the race as he wasn't able to get back onto his roof. But also Endless as well being taken out of uh, the title championship fight. So it would have been great to battle with them and uh, make it a five-way fight for the championship. But also a couple of things that just picking up on here which uh, I haven't noticed or hadn't noticed as of yet whilst, uh, whilst driving as I was just taking a quick glance down uh, to see what the average fuel usage per lap is. I think it was 3.97, it was 4 point something was the, uh, the amount that I used on the previous lap but on that MoTeC display attached to the steering wheel in the top right hand corner you can see BR space and F that is the, uh, the brake balance and I've got that set to 52%. Now usually I'll be running that up at 56, 57. But the reason it was down at 52 is because on the formation lap, I uh, I moved the brake bias rearwards just so that the uh, any braking that I did do on that formation lap would kind of heat the brakes evenly. But I forgot to switch it back now that we're actually underway and in racing conditions. So that could be a potential reason as to why uh, I almost went into the back of Dalkin going into Mossan Corner. But uh, although things seem to be alright now, now that I've kind of dropped off the back of a little bit off the back of the uh, off Jardia in front, and I've got a little bit of cleaner air flowing over my car, although it doesn't seem to be affecting the car too negatively at the moment, what it is actually doing is, if you look in the top right hand corner at the uh, tyre icons, you can see the tyre pressures there. You can see that the front, tire, front two tyres are both at 1.92 bar and the rear tyres are at 1.98 and 1.97. That'll be due to the fact that I've got the brake bias further rearwards and where I've got the brake duct openings uh, fairly closed, especially the rear ones more than the, uh, the front brake ducts. A lot of the heat is being retained in those rear brakes and is then obviously dissipating into the wheel rim and then heating up the uh, the air inside the tyre which is affecting the tyre pressures. Ideally I want all four corners to be uh, pretty even to one another, one another but at the moment we've got that disparity there so I imagine at some point I'll probably realise this and shift the brake bias uh, forwards once again to kind of take away some of the work that the rear brakes are doing so they won't be maintaining their temperature quite as much and the brake, uh, the front brakes will uh, work a little bit harder and hold a little bit more heat and then hopefully that will bring the uh, tyre pressures back into balance. But uh, I was effectively aiming for I think a tyre pressure of about 
three on all four corners, there or thereabouts, between 1.93 and 1.95. So it just helps with the uh, the straight line speed. There's just another quick glance at the uh, the fuel usage. It was 4.43 that I used on the previous lap. So I'm using a reasonable amount of fuel per lap. Obviously we had the manual formation lap at the very beginning as well, so that was going to allow us to save some fuel there. But you can see, although I've got some reasonable pace, it's not quite the same as the guys in front, but I'm hoping that when it comes to the traffic that uh, there'll be a little bit of luck and I can also deploy my uh, multi-class racing and the uh, traffic navigation skills to help bring that gap to the guys in front, especially Berserker, a little bit more as he's still up there in the race lead, nine seconds up the road. Just about managing to get the car slowed down for Mulsanne corner there. Things seem to be... Uh, all pretty good on the car at the moment. Oil temperature creeping up to 101, possibly 102 degrees. Nope, it's dropped down to flat 100 degrees. The only thing that seems slightly off at the moment in terms of my car is the uh, is the brake bias, which I haven't recognised yet at this stage. And then, of course, also my teammate as well, unfortunately uh, being forced to retire. It would have been ideal to have him still racing. So it would have made it a lot, lot easier in terms of uh, fighting for the team championship standings. And there we go. There I've realised the uh, the brake bias was off, and I've adjusted it back up to 56% uh, to the front. So that should help cool off the rear tyres, or should I say the rear brakes, a little bit more as they won't be heating up quite as much uh, in the braking zones. And then obviously it will heat up the front brakes a little bit more and that should bring the uh, tyre the pressures back into more equal, uh, equal pressures on the front to rear. From left to right they seem pretty good at their respective ends. It's just uh, front to rear there's a bit of a disparity as we're coming up behind uh, an LMP2 car who very kindly uh, gets out of our way and lets us on through. So we're not really going to get affected by him. Again a slow down penalty or slow down warning there shall I say. Just going through Tetra Rouge, just taking a little bit too much off, too much off on the inside kerb. Struggling to slow it, uh, clear it a little bit as well. I haven't actually touched the hybrid energy. You can see just how much I'm having to slow down in order to try and clear this penalty just from that uh, slight off-track excursion, as it were. It's actually going to allow the uh, LMP2 car to go back on through, but it does clear before I get to uh, this first chicane here. So that's going to cost us a whole bunch of time, as you can see, now 17 seconds off the back of Berserker. In hindsight, I probably should have just sucked up whatever penalty it was going to give me and just carry on racing. But I was uh, pretty keen to try and avoid picking up any time penalties where possible, just in case it came to a situation later on where we were very close to Berserker in the uh, the final moments of the race and kind of basically just needed whatever whatever advantage that I could possibly take in order to try and swing the result in my direction but we got over two hours before we get to see the checkered flag so we nip past the GTE car there and we've now just skipped ahead of time, just by a couple of minutes, has nothing really interesting happened other than me just driving around the circuit, but we're coming up onto the back of the rest of the, uh, the GTE field. So now we're getting into the traffic time, 
This is where I'm hoping that I can try and claw back some of the time that I have been losing to Berserker. So, first cart will be Derpepo in the Corvette there. Now 19 seconds off the back of Berserker. So he's been making pretty good work, working his way through and past these GTE cars. At the moment it seems like they're quite nicely spread out, which makes it a little bit easier to pass them as we go past TPW there. Continue on our way. Just a couple of quick glances at the uh, at the fuel usage. So I'm trying to keep a relative close eye on that and uh, almost in a way possibly consider working towards a uh, towards a target to try and extend the uh, the fuel stint a little bit more. But obviously, doing that could potentially cost us a little bit of time. Now coming up behind Marauder. So we'll go past him on the left-hand side as he moves over to the right-hand side of the circuit. Now coming up to towards Smolder, but we're coming into the Porsche curves here. So this is going to be crucial because I don't really want to lose too much time here. So we need to time this right, but coming through the long right-hander here, it's quite easy for the LMP1 cars to get around the outside of the GTEs as they have so much more downforce and a lot more grip and you can see up in the top left hand corner that the gap between myself and Berserker has now dropped down to just under 18 seconds so we've gained a little bit of time catching Andrex at a pretty good point as well able to pass him on the start finish straight so he's not going to really interfere and affect us too much there Lost a little bit of time to uh, passing Smolder, so did back off the throttle slightly just to kind of line up the pass on him a little bit better. So we can time it right and carry the speed and momentum and then obviously going a long way around around the outside. It would also mean that uh, I'm offline in comparison to the usual racing line. And that was just a very slight breathe on the throttle there, going through Tetra Rouge, just trying to commit myself and carry as much speed for it as possible. Let's run the first Mulsanne straight, heading towards that first Mulsanne chicane. The next car that we're going to be coming up onto the back of is M-Power. Let's navigate that first chicane quite nicely. Boosting up to about 280 kilometers an hour before we run out of a hot, uh, available hybrid energy. The car kind of tops out in around 335, 336, and then lifting and coasting coming into the second chicane here, just so we can carry a, a bit more of our usual speed coming into the, uh, the second chicane there and not run right up underneath the rear wing of M Power. We're now back into clear air once again, and the gap to Berserker is now back to over 20 seconds. There's a bit of a deficit, one that I wish was smaller, but it's a very long race. Anything can happen. And obviously, thinking of the long game, thinking of the strategy, thinking about that wet weather towards the end, just got to make sure that I do manage to hold on to some extent so I'm at least going to be there in and around potential striking distance before the end of the race because otherwise if I drop too far off even if I do take one pit stop less they may still have the buffer that they need to uh, come out ahead and may not be able to capitalize when the rain comes as well it all depends on what kind of strategy and approach in terms of their setup that they're taking as well because of course I don't really know I can only guess from what I've seen so far in this race that they were running pretty low downforce, almost minimal, whereas I think I was running 1-1 one, one wings just so I'd have a, a little bit more grip available to me when it, uh, when it comes to those wetter conditions later on in the race. Very nice smooth run there through the Porsche curves. And actually just looking up 
into the top left hand corner you can see that Berserker has actually dropped down into fourth position we're now only 15 seconds off the race lead so obviously something has happened there somewhere along the line not entirely sure what it was as we're not close enough to have seen that but that's brought us back into play a little bit and just as I was saying it is a long race anything can happen and obviously something has happened there so that's given us a little bit more hope and something to try and kind of push a name for as that gap is now smaller and actually the gap between the top four is very very close indeed only three to four seconds separating the four of them so we come up past uh, an LMP2 car and be coming up to uh, the leader of the LMP2 cars in just a moment as well Heading on down the Hernandez straight here. Hitting 328 just before we get to the braking zone. Obviously that's in kilometers now. Accelerating hard out through the exit. Using the hybrid, we're gonna get a little bit of slipstream here off the uh, LMP2 of Flaming Power as well. Should slingshot past him before we get to the second chicane and he's just Stayed over to the right-hand side and lifted out slightly there as well, just to make sure that I did comfortably pass him before getting to the second chicane. So, obviously, very good and uh, very aware driving by him. And now, past the uh, past the, all the traffic and lapped it all once. Apart from obviously some of the guys in the uh, LMP1 field, I think Jezza was has been the only person that we have lapped in the LMP1 cars. Obviously, we've had a couple of retirees as well. Jezza is behind, 25 seconds behind me, plus an entire lap as well. So we've got some clear air in front, not having to worry about any of the lap traffic for a while. So now it'll just come back down to overall race pace once again as we navigate our way through Indianapolis and Arnage quite nicely there. Three tenths of a second up on our best lap in this race so far. show of the apex on the entry to uh, the Porsche curves seems to be a right through the rest of it as well not really taking too much of the curves not wanting to unsettle the car but they are riding them a little bit There we go. It's our new fastest lap of our race, a 317.084. So hopefully if we can uh, keep up that sort of pace, we can hold on to the new race leader, which is Leon the sick one. So jumping through time once again by another five minutes or so. Just coming into the, uh, the Porsche curves. Wasn't the cleanest of entries going into there, but it wasn't too bad. We got 16 litres of fuel remaining in our fuel tank. So we're right around the window of when the Audis will be making their pit stops. And indeed, our first one is coming in, which is Dowking and also Berserker as well, also coming into the pit lane here on this lap. So that's going to bump us up into P3. Of course, that's not a net third position. I want to keep on pushing. And obviously, try and work the gaps a little bit in this pit stop phase to try and see if we can potentially come out a little bit closer to them. But obviously that means 
I'm going to need to put in faster laps than they are. But I'm going to be on uh, a lighter fuel load in comparison to them because obviously they will have filled up to the bring and taken a full tank of fuel as well. So I'm going to have a slight advantage there or at least bring it back a little bit more neutral because obviously the Audis are slightly quicker in a straight line anyway. They've got 15 more horsepower than the uh, the Toyota and the Porsche. But here on, uh, well, in fact, all the circuits in uh, Project Cars 2, they can only use 6 megajoules of hybrid energy per lap, whereas the Porsche and Toyota can use 8 megajoules of energy per lap. But it's only really the long circuits such as Circuit de la Sarve here, and also the Nürburgring, or Nordschleife, shall I say, the full, uh, the full Nürburgring. Only on those sort of really long circuits do you ever really get close or use that full allocation. So the Audis can't use quite as much hybrid energy coming off the corners as I can. However, they uh, they do have a little bit more top end speed than myself. Almost completely missing my breaking point there. Breaking a little bit too deep and going a little bit, oh sorry, breaking a little bit too late and going a little bit too deep as I was fiddling with the uh, the strategy a little bit. My plan is here to take a full tank of fuel but also change the tyres which will give me a nice new set of soft tyres to go into the race because you now see the shadow starting to get longer. So we do have the 10 times time acceleration applied here so we will be driving into and through the night as well and I was wanting a fresh set of boots to be going into the night conditions with especially if the track temperature and ambient temperatures are also cooling as well didn't really want it to mess with the uh, the tyre pressures too heavily and have those changing whilst also being uh, quite the way through this current set of tyres tyre life so fresh tyres there and I was just uh, turning off the damage repair because I don't really have any damage to the car I've got 1% engine damage at the moment but that's not going to impact the car's performance as Leon the sick one and Jardier are now into the pit lane as well to serve their first pit stop so we will now resume the lead passing them whilst they get their cars serviced we're now coming up onto the back of a Corvette just as we're coming up into turn one, two and three. I'm gonna dive down the inside there, coming into the uh, into the second corner, not wanting to lose any time or lose as little time as possible. Obviously a bit of a risky maneuver, but the Beppo saw me coming and allowed me to uh, slip on through. Probably shouldn't have done it to be honest. But uh, yeah, I was just pushing and not really wanting to lose any time. Getting caught behind him going through the Dunlop chicane there. And Leon and Jardier are now out of the pit lane. And Leon's 22... Oh, 23 seconds off the back of me. So he's had a pretty quick and short pit stop. Jardier is now a little bit further behind. About 40 odd seconds there or thereabouts. So obviously Jardier took uh, took fresh tyres in that pit stop whereas uh, Leon the sick one didn't not sure about Dow King and Berserker obviously 48 seconds off the back of me no doubt he would have taken uh, tyres in that pit stop as well so a mix of strategies going on there between the Audi guys it's going to be interesting to see where I come out in relation to them and Dow King's got a 16 second penalty now to his name. It was six, six seconds before the pit stops. So he must have got caught speeding in the pit lane. That would have given him a, uh, a 10 second penalty. But Jardier and Berserker now both got two seconds each as well. As the, uh, the sun is getting lower in the sky here. You can see the shadows are getting longer. There's a bit more sun glare on the track coming down this back straight here between Molsan Corner and Indianapolis. Coming up on the back of uh, Ticklish Pickerwickle. It's 
as we slip past him on the right hand side. Quite smooth run there through Indianapolis and Arnage, pushing hard. You can now see as well up in that top right hand corner, just had a look myself, the tyre pressures are now pretty much equal on all four corners but they are coming down a little bit. We're up at 1.92, 1.93 but as the sun is starting to set and the, uh, the temperatures, both ambient and also track, are starting to drop down, it means that the, uh, the pressures, or shall I say the tyres are cooling a little bit more, the brakes are cooling a little bit more, and therefore the temperature of the air inside starts to drop which means the pressure starts to drop as well so it's coming down to about 1.990 bar as we're continuing on and this will be our final lap on this stint before we dive into the pit lane so we've done 13 oh, sorry 12 full racing laps and one formation lap so we are currently on lap 14 at the moment coming through the S's a little bit shy of the uh, the apex on the left hand side there boost allowing us to get up to about 3.10, 3.12, just another quick check of the strategy whilst we're on the straight here. So as you can see, 62 litres of fuel will be going into the tank. Although, obviously, putting 62 litres in will take us over the uh, the maximum amount that the fuel tank can actually hold. So it will fill the fuel tank up to the brim and then also change to a fresh set of soft tyres. Approaching the second mile San Chicane, breaking just as we're getting to that 100 meter board. Entry and third gear, and then uh, the right hand up the mid part of that second chicane in second gear, which is actually the uh, the gears that I was meant to be taking in the uh, in the qualifying lap when I kind of ran you through the lap there. But I actually used fourth gear on the entry and actually ended up dropping down the two gears down into second for the right and now you can see the sun is really starting to get low it's starting to come in underneath the uh, the sun strip or should I say the top of the cockpit here and we've got the god rays peeking through the trees very soon things will be getting dark I do already have the lights switched on so it makes it a little bit easier for the other cars to spot you coming up behind them when you're coming to uh, pass them in the traffic situations. But the car's starting to feel pretty good at this stage. Gap to Leon has been coming down, he has been eating into it a little bit, but the, the gap to Berserker still up at around 49 odd seconds so things haven't really changed too much there obviously not going to have enough fuel to do one more lap so pitting in here hence the uh, the pitting board on the right hand side the pit crew will be there ready and waiting for me we just need a good run coming into the pit lane taking it relatively uh, relatively smooth before we get to the Pit speed limiter line, getting it down under 60 kilometers an hour, and just once again, just double checking the uh, the pit strategy there, make sure it's all set up correctly, not having to make any final adjustments. Which you shouldn't really be doing coming into the pit lane anyway, because it doesn't always necessarily save. Stopping in our box very nicely. So these are two the regulations of the 2016-2017 seasons of the uh, 
World Endurance Championship. So fuel goes in first. No one else is allowed to touch the car, apart from the uh, the guy doing either the windscreen terror or cleaning the windscreen. And then it comes to changing the tyres once the fuel is completed. I change the front tyres first, and then I change the rear tyres separately as there's uh, only mm. two two men on either side of the car. One with the uh, the wheel gun, the other with uh, carries the tyres. They kind of both share the uh, the tyre carrying capabilities or duties, shall I say, as well. But we're now at the pit lane, back out onto the circuit, obviously back into fifth position, and we're now 40 seconds off the back of Leon. Obviously, he didn't take any uh, any tyres in his pit stop, so that'll be the reason why the gap has increased so much there still about 15 to 17 odd seconds off the back of Berserker so the gap there hasn't really changed all too much kind of in and around where it was before he made his pit stop and we entered the pit stop phase once again we're coming up behind TPW to uh, put him down two laps on us. Obviously we've already passed him twice but he's unlapped himself whilst we were in the pit lane as the uh, the GTE cars can go quite a bit further into the race than the LMP cars can. They can do a full hour here at Le Mans. Whereas we can only do about 40 to 45 odd minutes and even even less for the Audis. So we'll continue to press on as we're coming up towards P2 and also P3 in the GTE class. As the sun is continuing to set. Hughes in the sky starting to go nice pinky purpley colour and the sun glare pretty strong as we're coming down this back straight smoulder up very kindly sticking to the left hand side of the circuit there allowing me to pass on the right without much issue this is one of my favourite features of the uh, of project cars too it's just how good the, uh, the day and night cycle is and how prettier looks but then also obviously the the weather as well and how that's all intertwined and uh, gives some great mixed conditions which can make for some very interesting racing something that this race is going to be including but it's yet to come later on but obviously Whilst actually driving, can't really appreciate the uh, how good the sky looks until we get onto straights like this. I just got a little bit of time before looking for the breaking point, and then obviously navigating our way through the corners ahead. A little bit of overstay there. It's coming out the exit of the Ford chicane. Just using a little bit more of the hybrid energy. It's coming up on towards the back of Andrex. Approaching the, uh, the Dunlop chicane here, but we should be able to carry our usual speed and momentum through there quite nicely and pass them easily as we go underneath the bridge. Down through the S's, filtering our way through between the curves, just catching the exit curb there a little bit awkwardly. Tetra Rouge was quite nice and smooth. And then this is a moment where I get to appreciate the sky and its beauty a little bit more. You can see the headlights are starting to come into effect now as well. Nice smooth run there through the first Marsan chicane. 
gap has now crept up to 42 and a half seconds between myself and Leon. The gap between myself and Berserker has come down a little bit. It's now about 11 to 12 seconds. Even though the relative board down in the, uh, the bottom left there is indicating otherwise more looking at the uh, the overall standings up in the top left. So it's a little bit more reliable in terms of gaps. It doesn't quite fluctuate as much as it does on the uh, on the relative. But uh, with the way things are at the moment, things are looking pretty good. I was a little bit worried in the first stint as to how far I was dropping off the back of Berserker. But uh, being in and around this sort of distance good 10 to 15 seconds it's kind of where I want to keep him really I um, want any real chance later on in the race when the conditions change and obviously we can ignore Leon, Dow King and Jardier as their guest drivers they're not going to impact the uh, the championship standing so even if we were to finish the way that we are now Berserker despite finishing in 4th position will be scored as if he finished in 1st and obviously I'll be scored finishing in second and get the uh, appropriate championship points. So taking a look at the state of the car, things are pretty good. Obviously you can see the dirt and rubber building up on the uh, the wheel arches out the front of the cockpit, in front of the windscreen there. But that's just cosmetic, no damage to the car tyre pressures are in a very good state 1.90 all round so nice and even things are looking good there oil temperature is dropping a little bit but that's natural with the uh, the ambient temperature dropping as well the engine won't be running quite as hot which means that if you were to be running in just the night conditions you can close the radiator up a little bit more but because we're also running in the day as well obviously I didn't want to run the radiator closed up too much otherwise the engine temperature could get too hot uh, when running in daylight conditions so it's kind of a compromise really that I'm having a run with just catching the curb on the outside there coming out the X or the S's good smooth run coming through Tetra Rouge and now onto the back onto, well, not the back straight, it kind of is a back straight, to be fair, but, uh, yeah, the Molsan straight, or the Hernandez straight, whichever you want to call it, I think it's known as the Hernandez straight, uh, in more recent times, but it used to be the Molsan straight, or at least the first part, and now we're coming onto the second Hernandez or Molsan straight. see the pace is starting to drop a little bit as well in these cooler conditions as the uh, air density changes a little bit becomes a little bit thicker so the aerodynamics work a little bit better in the corners but obviously that therefore means that there's a little bit more drag as well on the straights and then there's obviously also the potential for a uh, change in wind direction can't really tell which way the wind is actually blowing uh, at the moment there's no flags in and around this section of the track so I can't really use them as reference I think the only place where there could be flags is um, on the start finish straight I know the crowd sometimes wave flags but they're not affected by the wind but uh, the static ones that tend to be on top of uh, buildings or tall flagpoles they do rotate and uh, do indicate which direction the wind is blowing so just navigating our way through a little bit of GTE traffic as things are getting a lot darker now as you can see the GTE cars all have the yellow headlights makes it a little bit easier for them to distinguish 
what car it is that's coming up behind them. If it's uh, another car with yellow headlights, they'll know that it's another GTE car, but if they've got white headlights, then they know it's uh, an LMP. But both the LMP1s and also the LMP2s have white, white headlights, so I have to look to the relative to see which of the two classes it is. Either that or just judge by how quickly they're closing up behind. I'm just looking out for flags here on the start finish straight, but I don't actually see any. So yeah, we don't have any real indication as to which direction the uh, the wind is blowing here. But I think there's only a small handful of tracks that actually have flags up on the, on top of the buildings or by the track side that you can kind of use as potential reference. I know that Brands Hatch is one of those tracks, but I can't really think of any others off the top of my head to be fair. But yeah, it's now getting properly dark, as you can see. Or a little bit more dark, shall I say. It's not proper, proper dark yet. It's not pitch black, but it's certainly dark enough. Gap to Berserker. Still lurking in around 12 seconds, so things are looking pretty nice and steady there. Just kind of want to maintain this pace and maintain this gap to him. And that should put us in a pretty good position come later on in the race. So jumping a bit further ahead by another 10 to 12 minutes. Nothing has really happened. But coming in to uh, begin lap 22 now. Our lap 22. Gap to myself and Leon, the sick one. Now 46 seconds. And uh, Jardier has now swapped positions with uh, with Dow King. Berserker is still only 12 to 13 seconds up the road. So holding on to the back of him quite nicely. As you can see, conditions have got a little bit darker. Got the midnight sky out above Le Mans here. Car feeling good. Tire pressures in and around the right window as you can see just 0.01 bar disparity across the uh, the four corners but uh, that's not going to affect the handling of the car. And you're probably wondering why I'm why I've aimed for tire pressures up a little bit higher tend to find that the uh, the LMP1 cars feel a little bit better with their tyres up in and around at 1.85 bar to 1.90 bar but also it um, helps reduce some of the rolling resistance here on uh, the long straights running a slightly higher tyre pressure so you can get a little bit more top end speed out of the car or at least get up to uh, a slight higher speed a little bit easier so that's the reasons there as to why I've uh, aimed to get tyre pressures up above, say, the usual 1.0, uh, 1.80 bar that uh, you typically aim for in, say, uh, a GT3 car. So there's a bit of difference there from the classes in terms of setup and setup approach tracks like Monza and Le Mans here just pumping up the tyres a little bit more than you would typically run at their ideal pressures helps to uh, yeah just give you a little bit more straight line speed so into our Nage once again first gear a little bit of oversteer on the exit but the car is quite manageable when it does get into a slight slide, we've got about 27 litres of fuel remaining in the tank as well. So we've got an hour and 10 minutes of uh, racing left to go. And Dow King is now into the pit lane to serve his second pit stop. 
believe it is scheduled. Does Berserker go into the pit lane here as well? Indeed he does. So he's going into the pits as well. Obviously running the uh, running the Audi as far as it can possibly go on its fuel tank. But this is actually a pretty key part of the race because relatively soon we are expecting some rainfall to uh, come in and obviously at this point the Audis are going to have to make at least one more stop anyway to get to the end of the race but what I'm hoping is that the Audis would have to make two stops between now and then one for fuel and one for the change of tyres from the slicks onto the wets uh, when that wet weather does actually come and obviously with my Toyota having a bigger fuel tank I'm hoping that I can stretch this stint out a little bit more so that hopefully we come in for our usual scheduled stop when I basically ran the tank near enough dry basically be right in around when the rain is starting to fall we can possibly make the switch onto the wet tyres and not have to do two stops there so this is going to be interesting as to when the rain does actually start to start to fall there's not really too much sign of it yet in terms of there is no water or shall I say there is no rain falling from the sky however the sky has gotten very very dark which indicate that the, uh, the sky has clouded over quite heavily hopefully fairly soon we'll see those wet conditions start to come into play at least that is what I'm hoping that is what I'm banking on in order to try and help me stay really competitive over the length of the race and hopefully pick up a really solid result rather than relying on the pace of my lap times as the uh, yeah the Toyota just struggles to keep up a little bit to uh, to the Audi in terms of single lap pace but over the course of the race especially on the race distance there's uh, 2 hours and 20 odd minutes uh, it's pretty even between the two I think the Audi still has a slight natural advantage but the, the weather conditions throws in an extra an extra card into the mix which helps balance the uh, the playing field out a little bit more and kind of makes it a bit more interesting in terms of strategy as now Leon and Jardier are both into the pit lane and uh, you can see just adjusting my strategy there choosing to not change the tyre compound so we're still very much in the night conditions there's no sign of the sun starting to come up yet and my thinking is that if I don't take tyres here in this pit stop and just take the fuel that I need obviously don't need to repair any damage that will save me a bit of time bring me back out closer to the Audis as I know that Leon certainly hasn't uh, taken tyres as of yet he's actually come out ahead of us and so is Jardier as well Jardier is the next car that's immediately there up in front of us just going underneath the Dunlop bridge now so we've come out pretty close to the leading pair I'm going to assume that Jardier hasn't taken any tyres and uh, Leon the sick one hasn't taken tyres for the second stop in a row so he's obviously done very well in terms of tyre preservation I do tend to take a little bit of wear out of them quite early on but they tend to settle down as you go on through the stint and the wear isn't quite as bad you can actually make them last quite a while but obviously Leon doing a very good job of looking after them and not changing yet but it all depends on what Dowking and Berserker have done now. Berserker is about 40 odd seconds off the rear of my car. So that's pretty much in and around a pit stop there or thereabouts without tyre change. So it could be pretty close between the two of us. Let's just 
just two questions that are looming overhead at the moment. The first is obviously when is that rain going to come? And the second is can I time the pit stop just right with this next scheduled stop so that it does coincide with the rainfall and the track getting wet. And until then obviously we've got to keep pushing around just trying to keep setting consistent lap times I've had a few laps that have kind of been hindered by uh, by traffic as you can see uh, but we've had some pretty decent ones in the mid 17s bit nice if we can try and keep that pace up try and get down into the low 17s and potentially try and aim for 16s as well and the uh, the gap deltas that you're seeing there in the uh, the lap time board is in relation to the previous lap. So obviously lap 23 is 2.4 seconds slower on lap 22, whereas lap 22 was 10 seconds, at uh, 10 seconds, a tenth of a second. Sorry, uh, quicker than lap 21. But we're uh, five and a half seconds off the back of Leon. Just come under a little bit of pressure from uh, Chardier. They're now within a second of each other. You can just see them up the road. We do have a GTE car of Andrex between ourselves and also them. Hopefully we can time this right and uh, pass Andrex coming out the exit of the, uh, the Dunlop chicane here and out underneath the bridge without losing any time and indeed we do quite nicely sixteen and a half litres of fuel remaining so we should be able to go on for another two to three laps before we need to come into the pit lane up towards the back of TPW but are we going to be able to pass him before we get to the first chicane it doesn't look like we're going to be close enough to do so so we're going to lift out as well there just lifting and coasting and just gently rolling the car into that first chicane just obviously it cost us a little bit of time to uh, lean on up in front but not really worried about that too much at this stage Looks like the sky is starting to slowly get a little bit lighter. It's not quite as pitch black as it was before. We can now actually start to see the tops of the trees. Which means that we're coming towards dawn. And actually the cloud cover isn't as bad as I thought as it once was. As you can see the silhouettes of the clouds there up out to the left of Mossang Corner. So it looks like the rain isn't quite as imminent as I was initially predicting. And it's holding off a little bit longer. Which kind of uh, validates my reasoning for disabling the uh, the tyre change in the fuel stop and instead just sticking with the tyres that I've got now. Save the time there. Instead, just uh, change the tyres and maybe do a, a bit of a splash and dash for when the rain actually does come. If I do need to make a splash and dash, or at least can fit a splash and dash in to make it to the end of the race, it does all depend on when that rain actually starts to fall. Because obviously, it feels to start chucking it down now, and a pit with say 50 minutes of the race remaining, I'm not going to be able to make it to the end on one tank of fuel, but. I don't need to change the tyres until say 35 minutes before the end of the race and the rain holds off a little bit until then I should be able to just 
top up the tank with whatever fuel I need and go with that and go from there which will obviously save me some time as well because I won't be needing to take as much fuel on board as the uh, the Audis will need to take and I'll effectively gain time there because I'll be uh, obviously travelling around on the circuit at race pace for longer than uh, than they will So the gap to uh, oh, running a little bit wide there, coming out through the XLDSs, just managing to hold on to it. It's quite a uh, scary and hair-raising moment when that happens because the curb on the outside there is a little bit aggressive and it can unsettle the car quite easily and obviously going out onto the grass certainly doesn't help that matter either. It's quite easy to uh, potentially end up spinning. But we got away with it there, other than really losing time otherwise there was no real other issues but I got caught up behind Ampel there in the first chicane just cost me all the speed and momentum that I'd usually carry through and uh, that's actually gonna cost me a bit of time to Leon the sick one yeah well it was just over 10 seconds for a moment but it's now dropped once again so that looks like a car facing the wrong direction and recovering back onto the circuit there in the uh, second chicane. And indeed it was. It's cropped there in his Aston Martin. Didn't look like there was any damage to the rear of his car but I don't know about the front of it. Kind of hard to tell when you're kind of passing at that speed and you also got the, uh, the headlights as well kind of distorting your vision when you uh, look in the rear view monitor. The gap now is 36 seconds, 37 seconds to Berserker, which is good. Seems to be uh, eking up onto the back of him once we make our pit stop. Nine litres of fuel remaining, so we had to go for one more lap. very much doubt we'll be able to make two more laps so by the time we get to the start finish straight uh, we would have eaten more than a litre's worth of fuel even with the Porsche curves and the Ford chicane as well just obviously spend so much of the lap here at Circuit de la Sarve at full throttle out through the exit of the Porsche curves through the Corvette curves this is again just double checking the strategy no tyre compound changes i.e. not changing tyres full tank of fuel got fixed damage repair option set to off so mechanics won't be making any changes or repairing any of the damage on the car not that there really is any apart from now 2% engine damage but that's not performance impacting so we'll be pitting at the end of this lap. So we'll not be able to go for one more afterwards. Not unless we do some really serious lifting and coasting and some fuel saving. But obviously that's going to cost us more time than it's worth. So out onto the Hernando Strait once again. The first before the first Marsan chicane. Once again, for my own peace of mind, just double checking the settings that they're all set correctly, ready for the pit stop. Try and minimise any potential risk. So obviously there's a lot riding on this final hour of the race. Less than 55 minutes remaining. We're in a pretty good position at the moment, feeling quietly confident about how this race could potentially pan out as uh, things are starting to fall 
into place in terms of our trap positioning the strategy that I've chosen to go with in terms of both what the car is capable of in terms of the fuel stints but also in terms of the uh, the car setup as well obviously I probably could have run with a uh, zero zero wing which would have given me a bit more straight line speed but I'm thinking of where I'm going to be in relation to the Audis when the rain comes which is most likely going to be behind them and I'd much rather be behind them with the downforce that I need to keep me on the circuit rather than ahead and with uh, a car that could be a little bit skittish with uh, very little downforce for all those wet conditions so obviously you just end up kind of tippy-toeing around around the track and each mistake that you do end up making is uh, a little bit more demoralizing when you're out in front and in that kind of situation so it's a little bit of a mental game there in a way as uh, Leon and Jardier seem to be uh, battling and swapping positions at the front of the field here and looking at that gap to Berserker behind seems to be about 38-39 seconds I'm feeling pretty good about coming in towards this second pit stop we're just going to need to attack the pit entry here so pushing hard as we come into the first little chicane in the pit lane using a little bit of the hybrid energy making sure we get the car slowed down ready for the pit speed limiter line so we don't incur a penalty of any sort I want to try and keep my nose clean in that regard so we then come up to peel into our pit box stopping quite nicely and it's just going to be fuel here no tyre change as I mentioned so Dowking's gone on on through gap to Berserker closing up behind him. Was that a drop of rain that I just saw there? Potentially. Either way we get rolling and we're going to be pretty close to Berserker. He goes through now. So there he is up in front. And we now get rolling and underway and indeed it does look like the rain is just about starting to fall. I can see the few little droplets here and there in the headlights of the car but we're much closer to Berserker than we were previously things have worked out quite nicely in that regard and as you can see the gap is about seven or eight seconds between the two of us so that's very good fortunately we didn't quite time it just right with the rain falling but we should have a couple of laps here before the track really starts to get wet and it becomes difficult on the soft tyres. I'm hoping that we can hold on for uh, about 10 to 15 minutes or so. So just adjusting the strategy there to uh, select me wet pit stop strategy. Which is obviously going to be uh, changing on to the wet set of tyres. Won't need to repair any of the damage unless we make a mistake somewhere along the line and pick up said damage. But the main thing is, how much fuel are we going to need to take to get ourselves to the remainder of the race? And just calculating that with the game now as we're coming in towards the second chicane. Seems that it's going to be very, very close. Less than 21 litres. That's for certain. So we're coming up to lap Bazancic and his Porsche 919. So adjusting the strategy a little bit more. And the threshold point is about 9 litres of fuel, but we're going to put a good 4 to 5 litres extra in, which will give us one lap in hand, just in case we need it for whatever reason. Always better to be safe rather than sorry. So yeah, just another check. So 9 litres will be enough to see me to the end of the race. I want a little bit more there, just to be safe. 
that's when the uh, that fuel count switches from black numbers to uh, red numbers. That indicates that you don't have enough, fuel, or you won't be having enough fuel to get yourself to the end of the race, and you will need to take on more or do another pit stop. So yeah, there's a few droplets of rain starting to fall. Quick flash there to uh, De Beppo just to let him know that I was going to commit myself to uh, slipping on past before we got to the Porsche Curves as I didn't want to lose any time to Berserker in front as he's uh, yeah, he's pretty close up there in front of me and I don't want to lose any time to him, especially as the conditions are slowly changing. But yeah, there's no real sign of the track really getting wet just yet. There's a few droplets falling from the sky but it's not having an impact in terms of the car's handling but we do also have localised weather here in Project Cars 2 as well and with the Circuit de la Salle being such a big long track different parts of the track could be getting wetter quicker than others. Some parts could get completely absolutely drenched soaking wet, other parts could be completely bone dry. It all depends on how the weather system unfolds itself here in this race. It's going to make things interesting. So I can start to hear a little bit of the wet weather audio as if there's a little bit of spray being kicked up by the tyres. Can't see it in the rear view mirror as of yet. There was a slight change in terms of the tyre noise the earlier part of the lap. It seemed alright going through the uh, the first Mossland came there and as you saw stayed pretty much committed to the usual dry speeds and the car stuck quite nicely. So it's all about gauging the road here and just trying to read as to how wet or how dry the circuit is and therefore how much speed you can take in and through the corners at the moment things are still feeling pretty good, feeling pretty dry, doesn't feel like there's been any real changes in terms of the handling despite seeing a little bit more rainfall starting to uh, come down. So we'll turn on the windscreen wipers just so that we, uh, we keep nice clear vision in front of us as the sun still hasn't come up yet and risen above the horizon. It's starting to slowly creep towards there as the sky is getting lighter not enough at the moment. Just turning off the uh, the windscreen wiper because the water droplet build up on the windscreen is one method that you can tell just how wet or just how much rainfall is falling in and around the circuit at the moment. It doesn't really seem like any of the droplets are overly visible other than the ones being caught in the headlights. So I think we're good to keep on pushing for the moment. So Lucas is into the pit lane, but he is way, way behind us. And in fact, I think a lap down now as well. I think he might have been caught up in the incident on the opening lap with worn tyre. So he is almost out of contention for... Uh, the race win unless something drastic happens to myself and Berserker so it's it's almost a straight fight between myself and him just one point separates us that one point advantage is in my favour so now we're starting to see some water droplets starting to form on the uh, on the windscreen as uh, that was Lucas coming out of the pit lane behind us so he has a whole lap down behind you can see the pinky orangey hues starting to form in the sky as well as the sun is getting closer to closer to the horizon
Still pushing relatively hard through that first Marsan chicane. A little bit more water droplets forming on the windscreen as we can see, but it's not too heavy as of yet. And not seeing any spray being kicked up by the car in the rear view mirror. Breaking a little bit earlier than we would usually coming into the chicane here, just to give myself a little bit more of a buffer. We are losing a little bit of time to Berserker, gap extending out to about 13 to 14 seconds now, 12 to 13 seconds shall I say. But I don't really mind that too much, much rather loses the odd little bit of time here or there and actually make a mistake and uh, go off the road. Slipping on past the uh, Aston GTE there. There's no sign of spray being kicked up from his car. And as you can see, still able to take a fair amount of speed through Indianapolis. Likewise through Arnage as well. Car not really struggling too much, but Berserk has now got a five second penalty time penalty shall I say to his name and now it seems like the rain is a little bit heavier here coming up towards the Porsche curves it didn't seem like there was much in Indianapolis and Nile Naj but that's the localised weather for you some parts of the track could be a little bit wetter with more rainfall than others so the sky is looking very dramatic with a fantastic range of colours there So a flick on the windscreen wiper, just for a little bit, just to see how much it clears my vision, which isn't really t too much, there isn't really too much of an effect. If anything, having it off, being able to gauge how many water droplets are forming on the, uh, the windscreen of the car is uh, a little bit more important than uh, having the windscreen wiper on at this stage. As you can see, it doesn't really seem like there's any rainfall falling through the uh, Dunlop chicane. Turn one Dunlop curve there. Not really much or any through the Yasis or Tetra Rouge either. It might be pretty hard for you to tell, but there is a little bit Starting to form, coming down. Small sand straight down towards the first chicane. As we come onto the brakes. Just being nice and smooth. Good thing is, with obviously with the cars circulating round in these kind of conditions, it's helping to keep a, a relatively dry line as well. Because any water that is starting to form on the circuit is going to end up getting lifted by the tyres and the cars going round. It seems like there's a little bit more rainfall here coming into this second chicane. So we'll take this just a little bit easier. As the sun is now picking up above the horizon. As things are getting a little bit brighter, the shadows are starting to form now. It's going to make it a little bit easier to see how much water there is around the track as well. And there you can see a little bit more clearly. There's a little bit more rainfall in and around Molsan Corner and coming down this straight down towards Indianapolis. So we may need to be a little bit more cautious coming into the braking zone here. Just so we don't skate off into the gravel. say that do take the uh, the first part of Indianapolis completely flat out really leaning and relying on the downforce they're taking a little bit of risk seeing if I can try and uh, claw back some of the time that I'm losing to Berserker a little bit here I'm 
think this will be interesting coming into the Porsche curves here, just as to how dry or how wet the track is. Again, it may have been a little bit difficult for you to see, but it seemed like there's a slight sheen starting to appear on the surface of the track in the early part of the Porsche curves. And through the rest of it, it didn't look too bad, though. It still looked fairly dry. So lap by lap slowly getting wetter at various points around the circuit we're just going to need to make sure that we kind of bookmark those and remember them for the next lap that we come round so we know where we need to ease off a little bit and where we can keep on pushing last time round it was pretty dry in and around this area it's coming up onto the back of uh, TPW a bit tight there going to uh, his left hand side as we're getting blinded by the sun coming underneath the Dunlop Bridge. So the sun is low in the sky in that sunrise. It's absolutely stunning though. It's properly gorgeous that does. Things were reasonably dry still coming into the first Mulsanne chicane up here. So hopefully we'll be able to carry the speed in. Not lose too much time, although we do have an LMP2 car here. Which could take away some of the uh, the nice clean air that I need. But we'll pass him before the second chicane using the hybrid energy. Accelerating up to speed. Downforce levels of the LMP2 cars are still pretty high in some of the corners do take very similar speeds to the LMP1 cars, it's just obviously the LMP1 has the hybrid acceleration with its deployment coming off the corners and that allows it to uh, really make the difference in terms of lap time getting caught well up behind Smolder there as he was very slow going through the second Mulsanne chicane, I don't know whether he had been into the pit lane and switched onto a wet set of tyres or whether he was just treading really really cautiously it's cost us the a little bit of time, 14 seconds off the back of oh, Berserker, and that sounded like a little bit of a puddle there, starting to form on the exit of uh, Mulsanne Corner. So as you can see, it's a little bit more rainfall, and there we go. Track a little bit wetter along this straight here. Sounds like there is still the odd dry patch. But we're going to have to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more cautious, a little bit smoother coming through here. Managed to navigate our way through Indianapolis and into Arnage. A little bit of understeer, a little bit of oversteer on the exit as well. So we're getting hard on the accelerator. We just need to find where those drier patches are. Try and maintain the speed and the grip. And then obviously we want to try and uh, figure out where the best point is to uh, make the pit stop as well. So you go around the outside of Flame and Parrot there in the entry to the Porsche curves. Meaning on the downforce, not really wanting to lose any time or lose as little time to uh, Berserker as possible. So we're now coming up onto the back of Andrex, but we'll pass him quite easily and comfortably for the two little right left kinks there. Who is going to blink first in terms of jumping onto the wet tyres? When is that right opportunity going to be? I don't feel that it is going to be yet. The track doesn't seem to be wet enough for the wet tyres for the moment. It's one thing that I don't want to do is jump onto the wet tyres. It's for the track not to be quite wet enough for them yet and to kind of cook through the tyres and take the uh, the edge off them take away a little bit too much of the tyre life and a little bit too much of the grip so that's going to make it a little bit more difficult come later on in the stint in the final few laps so I'm thinking the longer I can stay out on the slicks the better I'll be later on but obviously I don't want to go too late in the transition from dries to wet that I'm skating around on uh, on the dry tyres with uh, absolutely no grip whatsoever. 
so far. Although the track is starting to get a little bit wetter, it's not too bad. It doesn't seem like it's quite at the, uh, the switchover point. So just adjusting the strategies, making sure I'm all, all set for the, uh, the pit stop, which are coming fairly soon. Seems like this second chicane is still reasonably dry, so I can still push quite nicely through that section. Or at least that corner. The first chicane was a little bit damp, but again, not too bad. But Mosan Corner has been getting wetter, as has Indianapolis and Arna, so we'll need to be a little bit careful coming here into Mosan Corner, chucking the car in. Not too bad, to be fair. A little bit better than I was expecting, but I think with the car circulating around, it's kind of helped to keep the track a little bit drier in certain places. And obviously with the sun coming up now as well, and the rainfall isn't too heavy, the sun is uh, going to help keep some of that water from forming on the track itself. Here the odd little wet spot. But nothing too major. Leon the sick one is into the pit lane though. See that up in the top left, up in the standings there. This straight here seems to be a little bit wetter, so thinking that the Porsche curves could be a little bit damp. Being a little bit cautious there, but even still the rear end of the car wanting to break free. Just about managed to hold on to it though. Trying to lean on the downforce a little bit going through the Porsche curves as Dalking is also diving into the pit lane. He feels it's about the right time. Jardier has stayed out on track though and is uh, still going. He's still pressing on. And I think Berserk is into the pit lane as well and indeed he is. Final chicane is a little bit tricky but my thinking was that if Berserker was going in I'm going to stay out. I'm going to try something different. I'll try going another lap on and there is Leon as well just coming out of the pit lane. A bit of spray coming off the back of his car as we slip on past him under the braking coming into uh, turn one or two. The car is actually really struggling for grip. As the tyre temperatures have dropped off and he's actually gone and made contact with the side of my car there as I was going to look down the inside of the, uh, the GTE car and he also went for the same gap as well. I can now certainly hear that the track is getting a little bit wetter. I think he got very, very lucky there to not pick up any damage and also actually managed to hold onto the car without actually spinning. But we're now behind Leon, the sick one, who would have no doubt hopped onto the wet tyre. So this will be a very good gauge as to whether I've made the right call or not, as to whether I can actually keep up with Leon, the sick one, or whether he ends up pulling away. A run through the first cane there wasn't all that great and I've really struggled for traction coming off the exit there. As you can see, it's gone and extended a whole bunch of car lengths out ahead of me. But what is the rest of the lap going to be like? Where am I going to come out in relation to Berserker as well? That is the key question. Key question. It's not so much about uh, Leon the sick one or Dow King, although Leon's serving as a pretty good gauge for us at the moment. It's more about where we're we coming out in relation to Berserker. Parts of the track doesn't feel actually too damp, but looking at the tyre temperatures, they are dropping off quite rapidly. And again, just double checking the fuel load that I'm going to be taking here, splash and dash. Although it's not quite a splash and dash because I'm also changing uh, changing tyres as well. But uh, yeah, just a quick splash of fuel that I'll be taking. But you can see up in the top right, tyres are indicated as blue. And actually looking at the motor display, you can see the front left tyre down at 41 now, 41, 40 degrees now is slowly dropping and the front right is at 35, now just dropped to 34 so tyres are getting very cold, that's obviously taking away an awful lot of the grip but I'm trying to rely on the downforce a little bit although in the slowest speed corner such as Indianapolis there where there isn't all that much downforce, well there is still obviously quite a bit of downforce being produced by the LMP1 car but 
you get what I'm saying, you don't produce a huge amount at the slower speed corners, but where that downforce had bled off, the car was skating around quite heavily. Just about managed to keep it under control though. So you can see you've gone and lost a whole bunch of time to Leon the sick one. He is pulling away. Jardier is into the pit lane. Coming into the Porsche curves. Bit of oversteer there. Managed to gather it back up though. Sounds like there's the odd little patch here or there though, which is still dry, but tire temperatures have dropped off so much running through the water that it's definitely going to be the right time to come into the pit lane now to make a switch to the wet tyres so we've got to make sure that we just don't mess up the chicane here as we almost go deep through the first little chicane coming into the pit lane and we definitely don't want to be speeding over that pit speed limiter line so here we go then the critical moment the final 30 minutes of this race the final pit stop that I'm going to be making here in round eight at Circuit de la Sarve. This is the championship battle. And we are in our pit box, just taking on those 14, 15 additional liters that we need to get ourselves to the end of the race. Now the car is jacked up and the tire change is underway. Front tires are done. They're now doing the rear tires. Just switch into telemetry view there just to make sure that they are applying the correct tyres onto the car as we now get rolling once again and indeed they have they put the wets on so where are we going to come out in relation to Berserker I think it's going to be very very close between the two of us as we're accelerating away now using some of the hybrid energy and it does look like we're going to come out ahead of Berserker obviously just behind uh, one of the GTE cars but we'll slip past him immediately as we come through the Dunlop chicane but we've gone and taken fourth position away from him this is absolutely fantastic for us we now have track position and this means that if we hold this position now until the end of the race I'll end up coming away we have the title here in season four of the AOR Endurance League so now I just gotta maintain my focus and concentration and try and hold on to this position because obviously Dow King, Leon and Jardier up ahead are guest drivers they will not be counted in their positions and will not get the championship points for those positions so instead all the other usual championship drivers will get promoted up in place of them and get the respective points but I've just got to keep myself ahead of Berserker now and I'm just looking for the wetter parts of the circuit as I much prefer running the wet tyres at cooler temperatures than I do when they're hot. When they're hot they do struggle for grip but when they're dropping down to around 50, 60 odd degrees they are quite nice. Main windows kind of in and around between about 80, well, 80 degrees downwards and they're getting very much into that so that's good liking that just adjusting the uh, the brake bias a little bit there just to um, kind of help and avoid locking up the front tyres under heavy braking feeling quite confident now we've got track position our tyres are one lap younger than Berserkers we've got the fuel to the end of the race and I know I've got the setup for these wet conditions as well it's just how much wing angle how much downforce does he have on his car for all these wet conditions although we're going to make a mistake there running out wide coming through Indianapolis which is going to allow Berserker to close up onto the back of us a little bit but the race is very much on just 24 and a half minutes remaining in this race plus whatever lap the countdown reaches 0, 0, 0, 0 on car feeling pretty good on the entry to the Porsche curves there it's a little bit tentative with the throttle but the car quite nicely sticked though not the best of lines there coming out through the exit and through the Corvette curves should have been a little bit further over to the right hand side to try and open up the final left you can hear there's very little water 
coming here into the uh, into the final chicane, which is uh, going to increase the temperature of the tyres. You can see I'm creeping up towards 80 odd degrees. You can see that Berserker is closing up onto the back of us as well. So obviously the cars circulating around, sticking to their usual line. It's meant that the water's being lifted from the track surface and it's a little bit drier than some of the other places especially when venturing offline. But the racing line is the quickest way around the circuit. It's just kind of trying to find the balance between the two, providing that we don't end up cooking the tyres too much. Now they'll get a little bit of respite as we're coming down. The first of the Hernandez straights here, moving over to the right-hand side of the track to try and find some water but struggling to do so there's a little bit here coming in towards the first mile San chicane pretty good smooth run through there and it looks like we've eked out a bit of a gap to berserker behind as well seems like it's extended slightly now we're finding a little bit of water is helping to cool the tyres off. Second chicane, breaking in at the usual point. I see puddles starting to form just off the uh, the main racing surface on the inside of the kerbs. So that's thing. That's one thing that we're going to need to keep an eye out for is those live chat puddles as we want to try and avoid them otherwise the car will start aquaplaning and hydroplaning our sand corner doesn't seem too bad it seems quite nicely wet but it doesn't seem absolutely soaking wet there as of yet we know that Indianapolis is, uh, is quite damp so we need to adjust ourselves coming up here or the right left managing to get it slowed down this time kept it out of the gravel on the exit there likewise going through our nudge nice smooth run quite a lot of spurry being kicked off out the back of the car up towards the Porsche curves. Just gently guiding the car in. Trying to keep it smooth and steady. Don't want to unsettle the car too much. If at all. And again, not the most ideal run coming out the exit of the Porsche curves there. It's closing up onto the back of Dow King now as well as he's caught up behind uh, Tukulish Picklewickle. In fact, Dalking's actually peeling off into uh, into the pit lane. Potential issue, maybe some damage. A potential issue with uh, his tyres. Not entirely sure what his reasoning was for peeling into the pits. There, he may have actually forgotten to uh, take the fuel that he needed. But that's us now up into uh, up into P3. Berserker is still there lurking behind albeit he has dropped off a little bit further off the back of us which is good gives us a little bit more of a safety buffer good to me run through Tetra Rouge so we're into the final 20 minutes counting it down bit by bit getting closer and closer slowly but surely towards that championship again just trying to find the water trying to help cool the tyres a little bit more before coming into the first chicane here so don't want those tyres to be getting too hot going through the corners it seems like the rain is falling quite heavily coming down the second Hernandez straight here which is good for us Help cool the tyres a little bit more. Just 
taking it nice, smooth and steady. It seems like there's quite a bu big puddle forming on the inside of the apex curve midway through that uh, second chicane, so we need to make sure that we don't end up dipping the wheel over the other side of that curve. Now coming into Moss Ang Corner, how bad is it getting down here? This is quite a notorious part of the circuit for uh, live track pedals, but at the moment things seem pretty good. Obviously it's very, very wet, but there's no big puddles forming as of yet. Now we come into Indianapolis once again. Move run through Arnaj. Just trying to hold the gap to Berserker behind. Which at the moment seems pretty good. Working in around five seconds at the moment. So we've got a little bit of a buffer there, but if we're to catch the traffic at just the wrong moment, that gap could get absolutely destroyed. And uh, see him closing right up onto the back of us managing to open up this left hander a little bit more this time now into the final four chicanes just riding the curves quite nicely just trying to be nice and smooth It seems like there's a few dry patches in and around this part of the track. And this is what I was talking about with the localised weather. As you can see, the track looks not completely dry, but reasonably dry-ish in and around here. But obviously on the previous lap, in and around Mosan and Indianapolis, the track was absolutely soaking wet. Very shiny. So obviously there hasn't been all that much rainfall over here and that's one of the things I actually love about the, uh, the wet conditions here in Project Cars 2 is the variation kind of the unpredictability of it so all of a sudden the frame rate has uh, dropped and that's going to cause me to uh, basically miss my breaking point as go straight across the uh, the first Mole Saint Chicane here trying to get back to the track as quickly as possible and this was a little bit of an issue that I was having with Project Cars 2 and the game at this sort of time. It was very, very long distance races. The frame rate was dropping and the best way to uh, fix it was to alt-tab out of the game and then alt-tab back in, which it has done. But just as we were coming back in and re-grabbing the steering wheel, that kind of pulled me over to the right-hand side of the circuit and almost had Berserker go into the back of me there. That was more my fault than his, but merit to him to avoid hitting the back of me and uh, obviously avoid the contact there, but that's going to cost me third position now. So I'm now down into fourth. That's that Berserker go on through. Obviously a very dangerous situation, but with the frame rate dropping like that, I was only going to end up missing more breaking points. It's only going to really be more dangerous. So we needed to fix it as quickly as possible by alt having him out and then coming back into the game once again. And that has sorted it. But uh, in the laps leading up to that sort of moment, I did have the pace over Berserk and seemed to be uh, edging away from him. So feeling relatively confident despite now being behind that I could still basically hold on to the back of him and try and challenge him for... Uh, that third position once again, although we had a slight mistake there going through Indy. So obviously we want less of those and more keeping it on the track, but one thing that is playing into my hands at the moment is Berserker's five second time penalty. If I can't hold on to the back of him but keep myself within five seconds, I'll end up inheriting the position 
but Berserker is getting caught up behind the uh, the Aston Martin of Andrex here which is allowing me to close up onto the back of him once again as we go around the outside of the Aston there getting caught in the dirty air though just taking away the downforce and you can see Berserker running the clear air having that grip is able to eke out basically the car lengths and the time that he lost so now coming through the final four chicanes you can see the amount of spray is quite drastically reduced to pretty much nothing here as the track is uh, a little bit drier in this portion of the circuit and you can see by actually being able to gauge the amount of spray off the back of Berserker is helping me I can see that there is none therefore the grip should be there so I'm able to push a little bit harder than him but also getting caught in that dirty air a little bit taking away the downforce that uh, that I want to be able to get the uh, the grip from the tyres it seems like we've used a little bit more of the hybrid had a slightly better run coming out of a Rouge uh, Tetra Rouge, sorry, not a Rouge out of Tetra Rouge and we're closing up onto the back of Berserker here where we're going to take a look see if we can get past him coming into the first chicane we're going for the move around the outside are we going to be able to hold it around the outside and indeed we do manage to get it done under braking I think Berserker just getting onto the brakes a little bit earlier but he's now coming back at us and wow absolutely slingshot past under the hybrid but he deployed his earlier which means that he ended up coming off his hybrid a little bit earlier I was still using mine for a little bit and having that little bit of double slipstream is allowing us to go side by side once again coming into the second chicane here who will be the later of the late breakers that is going to be me will be slotting myself back up into that third position as Berserker concedes that place but he is right there right behind us and this time around he's going to have the slipstream coming down towards Mulsanne corner we're into the final 11 and a half minutes there or thereabouts by a few seconds things are getting intense things have been nice and respectable and fair so far making defensive moves switching over to the right hand side of the circuit Berserker having a little bit of a look to the outside there coming into Mulsanne corner but that's not going to quite work but he's got the traction coming off the turn deploying his hybrid energy doesn't look like he's quite managed to eke up alongside and I was able to just stretch out a few kilometers an hour to uh, slip out ahead I'm going to hang to the right hand side of the circuit here and hold the defensive line coming in towards Indianapolis as he is on the outside looks like he's just about managing to nose ahead so he's going to jump himself back up into the third position as we're chopping and changing places but he's going to run a, li a little bit deep there on the exit which is allowing me to slip on up past and I'm on his outside here coming into Arnaj giving the room on the inside a little bit of contact there between the two of us but it didn't incur any damage to my car don't think it incurred any damage to his but it has allowed me to go and take the position quick flash of the lights there to let the uh, the Corvette know that we're coming up behind and coming on through but it's been pretty good intense respectable stuff so far there was a little bit of contact in Arnage as, as we saw but I think that was just the lack of grip with uh, Berserker on the inside and just uh, rubbed the side of my car but it wasn't anything major chopping and changing position a number of times on this lap has made it very interesting and very intense going defensive here coming into the final four chicanes he's on my outside but thinks better of the move it's pretty difficult to pass here so it's very very tight almost a single line going in gets pretty close through the through the apex and he's there right behind in the slipstream holding a little bit of the hybrid energy ready for the Mulsanne straight because I know that it's going to be more effective using it there and trying to counteract his uh, straight line speed getting a good run coming through turns two and three into the final ten minutes this is getting very intense this is the battle for the championship leaders are going to run out a little bit wide there and I do get the slow down penalty but we are going to ignore that using a little bit of a hybrid to uh, counter at Berserker coming back at us there as he deployed a little bit coming out of Tetra Rouge I'm trying to give back this slow down penalty if I can 
don't ideally want to be picking up a time penalty or even still do end up picking up that time penalty but it's allowing Berserker to slip on through only just about though as he once again gets onto the hybrid a little bit earlier than I do but I'm going to use a little bit more this time round see he finishes deploying his hybrid a little bit earlier which allows me to once again slip on past as we come on the run down towards the second mile San chicane managing to get ahead as he slots in behind before we get to the braking zone getting very close to that big puddle on the inside of that curbing there at the apex they may come under threat once again coming up towards Mosan corner managed to eke out a little bit under the hybrid deployment but he's now getting that slipstream and that straight line speed so he's starting to come at us going to defend for the inside line forcing him to go the long way around but it doesn't really pull up alongside so I retake the usual racing line but now he's just absolutely rocketed off and past us coming out the exit of the Marsan corner there certainly seems to be doing much better traction wise off the exit of the slow corners than I am and I'm not really able to do anything here coming in towards Indianapolis I'm in the slipstream I'm not really quite closing up onto the back of him so just settling behind for the moment make sure that we nail our breaking points on the apexes albeit in the spray of Berserker in front which is making it pretty difficult to see to be honest it's a little bit tidier there through our Nage. we're now getting a little bit of slipstream here on the run up towards the Porsche Curse but I'm not going to be close enough to challenge him coming into the first right hander here so just going to settle in behind you can see the loss in downforce and the lack of grip that I have following in the dirty air of Berserker. Costing me time here, dropping me off the back of him as we're starting to see a few light track puddles starting to form at various points around the track as well. So we've got six and a half minutes remaining now. Getting very close to the end of the race. And even though I would like to try and actually finish ahead of Berserker physically on track, I do still have a five second buffer to play with in terms of uh, Berserker's time penalty. Catching the curb a little bit awkwardly there in turn one. I think he's uh, managed to gain a little bit of confidence and is pushing quite hard, although he's lying coming through the S's there wasn't entirely the best although my run through Tetra Rouge as you saw was not great didn't get the slowdown penalty for it though despite running out wide I think I managed to negate that by lifting out a little bit earlier and hesitating on using the hybrid deployment but using it a little bit later and now starting to close up we've got the slipstream as well not close enough to challenge coming into the first Molsan chicane but closing out quite a lot in the breaking zone of that what will we be able to do coming out through the exit will we be able to use a little bit more hybrid than he does it looks like we have just the tiniest smidge as he's looking defensive wanting to defend the inside line as we get in a slipstream on the approach towards the second Molsan chicane I'm gonna have to go to the right and go on the outside here coming into this corner going for the move around the outside giving him the racing room are we going to be able to pull this one off it looks like we are as we get the apex on the right hander on the inside we managed to step ourselves back up into p3 but berserker is still right there behind us are we going to be able to defend coming into the Malsan corner or will the slipstream and the straight line speed of that audi be too strong for us we're going to go defensive to the inside line as he's looking to the outside coming into the braking zone now so shifting down through the gears, the rear end of the car stepping out quite massively and somehow we managed to gather that car back up and also defend and hold on to the position at the same time I'm pretty sure that was due to us catching one of the life track puddles there just as we were coming into the turning point and the act playing round but we're now very much under threat from Berserker once again as he's looking to the outside coming down towards Indianapolis there he is as we glance over to look to see where he is he's managed to nose ahead before we even get to the braking zone so a slot in behind Following him on through here 
as he once again runs a little bit deep and out a little bit wide so we're looking to the outside once more coming in towards our nudge giving him the room at the apex he gives me the room on the exit and then accelerating out away he once again manages to get the traction so there in the slipstream looking to see if we can potentially try and get the move coming in towards Porsche Curse but he's actually gone and slowed down he's also gone straight into the wall there as well before we even get to the corners and that has allowed us back up into P3 but Berserker's game has actually crashed and frozen which caused him to go off and crash in the final four minutes of the race as well the last three and a half minutes when we were having such a titanic and epic battle between the two of us it's really really unfortunate because I would have loved to have taken that all the way to the flag and no doubt it would have gone there but with Berserker's game crashing and him crashing into the wall that's gifted us the position and no doubt would have gifted us the championship as well which is really really a big big crying shame uh, Berserker our game is I think crashed it's just frozen solid nothing's happened oh, are you kidding me I, like, I went under the gantry if you were like Behind me and it's just blank. It's not blank screen, it's just frozen on that screen. Oh, no way, man. Oh, that sucks so hard. It was such a good battle at the end as well. And that was just a conversational exchange between myself and Berserker in Discord at the time of racing. That was live from that situation. You can hear the despair and disappointment in Berserker's voice and obviously I felt so bad and so sorry for him that it played out in the way that it did because that was such a great and intense and such a respectable battle as well I was really really enjoying that in these final few minutes and it was really kind of forming a, a very very sweet cherry on top of what had been a, a fantastic season but it's absolutely gutting to have the chance of potentially winning the championship stripped away from you from no real fault of your own. But that has, fortunately in a way, for us, popped us up into P3. And as Berserker was our nearest competitor and is now out of contention that is going to gift us, gift us the title that is obviously providing that we can actually make it to the end of the race ourselves Jardier is a minute and 40 odd seconds up the road so I don't think that this is going to be the last lap of the race despite the countdown timer in the last 40 seconds I imagine he'll go across the start finish line before that uh that ticks down to zero zero and there is the confirmation of Berserker leaving the session game completely gone such a shame we've got ten and a half litres of fuel remaining which is obviously enough to see us to the end of the race the strategy was working out very very nicely in terms of the number of pit stops we still had to make four pit stops as well as the Audis rather than the three that I was hoping to do but obviously had to take less fuel on board in the final stop and it worked quite nicely with the tyres in terms of the uh, switching to a new set of soft tyres just as we were going into the night conditions and then obviously changing to the wets worked and played out quite nicely and obviously setting the car up for these wetter conditions as well not entirely for these wet conditions but you know obviously keeping them in mind as we do begin the final lap of the race now but yeah keeping these wet conditions in mind and kind of setting up the car to be good in both it's really helped to pay off and get us into a position where we could battle with Berserker in that last half hour, 25 minutes or so. So 
coming through the S's one last time. We're not really pushing too hard at this stage. We've got a nice big gap to the guys behind. Just Dal King in fourth position. And we're a long way off the back of Jardier and Leon. But uh, yeah, as mentioned, they're obviously guest drivers. Looks like we've got a couple of cars battling away up in front. Although actually they're not battling for position, they're just overtaking each other as they're on two separate or different laps. But we'll pass them here on this uh, second Hernandez straight. Dowking's now got a 58 second penalty. Blimey. Wonder what that may have been for. Not entirely sure. This is penalty certainly wasn't that big previously. And Jardy has now come across the uh, the start finish line. So that is the uh, effectively the race complete for him. We got uh, 265 odd seconds to uh, make it round to cross the start finish line. Oh, plenty of time as we're a minute and a half there or thereabouts so about a hundred odd seconds behind him tracks a little bit tricky in a couple of places as you saw a few light track puddles back in Monsang corner these straights aren't too bad though it's quite good Indianapolis doesn't seem to be uh, too bad either. Obviously it's quite wet but there's no huge puddles that are going to cause the car to uh, act plane or slide around. We might come up to just one more car before the end of the race with Jandrex. See him up ahead going into the Porsche curves. Probably catch him on the exit coming out the other side through the Corvette curves. And DB Duke. Oh, big slide there. Running over the wet curb, and then there was a couple of light track pedals as well out on the exit, but, but managed to avoid any kind of catastrophe there. So we're now into the final chicane for the final time here in season four in the final race we are going to come across the finish line single flash of the lights as although i'm pleased to have taken the race win here and therefore the overall championship title in the driver's standings but would have very much liked to have taken that battle all the way to the checkered flag with berserker but unfortunately this game crashed so i was feeling pretty somber and pretty sorry for him and that he was robbed of the title fight but getting that third position on track which is effectively a net first position because Jardier and Leon won't be scoring the points that extends my lead six points ahead of Lucas who ended up coming home in second place as he was the only other title contender to actually finish the race here in this final round Teammate Warren Tyre came home in third position with Endless in fourth and then Berserker came home on joint points with him on joint fourth position slash fifth. Looking further down through the table, Brzanchek came up sixth with Nunu Marcus in seventh, eighth position was Lewis. Spudbuster came home in ninth position overall with Skarki in tenth and then Bird is the Word was in eleventh position overall, Jezza in twelfth and then Borderline was in 13th position as well then when it came to the team championship Warn Europe Racing came away with that title as well 11 points ahead of Audi Sport South Wales Audi Sport in third position with Infinity Racing in four fifth was EVR Motorsport sixth was down by the Riverside Engineering and then B on Edge came home in seventh position in the team championship standings but there is just one last little look at the confirmation of the race results then. 
But otherwise, that is going to conclude it for this video and also conclude it for this series of the Apex Online Racing Endurance PC League this Season 4. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this race and I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the rounds that I put up here on the channel as well. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and help out with the YouTube algorithm. That would be very much appreciated. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I shall catch you in the next one. But until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.